religion and has taken over. I mean, take these guys at PTR Radio just to look at these basement dwellers. Two fat guys and someone who thinks he's a freaking monkey. The end is near, folks. And now back to just a great podcast. I mean, a really great bunch of guys, just the biggest and best stars on the podcast scene. And now back to PTR Radio with Mike the Ape Man, Shaggy and Colin. These three guys should really come with a warning label, maybe like for rectal use only. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to a, another edition of PTR Radio, quickly becoming a monthly feature. <laughs> <So> <laughs> It's not by anyone's fault other than our own. <laughs> no, it's not anyone's fault other than mine. <laughs> you know, uh, and I am going to... Uh, all right, I'm not going to drink this Mountain Dew that I brought in because it has... I thought, I'm like, oh, it just has a smudge on the outside of the bottle. No, there's something white on the inside of the bottle. I probably shouldn't drink that. No. No. It's not a finger or a rat, so, you know, that's good. But Gosh, uh, probably, yeah. it's, it's, it's probably to sat around too long, and all yeah. the extra caffeine has uh, condensed on the side of the ball. Yeah, but, you know, I just... <sighs> I've had enough fun uh, lately that I don't, I don't want any more fun. So, uh, yeah, so Colin, Colin's had, uh, you know, uh, world travels. Uh, that have kept us from going on. I've I've had other issues that have had a, ha, kept us from going on, uh, you know. And so, eh, yeah, that's why we're on a we're on a Thursday, and uh, why you know it it happens. What happens? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Um, I we we are not young people, you know. We are we are older, uh, wiser, and unfortunately, that also means that we go through certain certain things, certain medical procedures. Pre-menopause. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're pre-menopause, Mike, yeah. So, no, not uh, we. No. I'm in my prime. <laughs> really? <laughs> really, Mr. Ice Packs on the knees, slip disc in the back, uh, you uh, know, can't get off a toilet without never a cane. Had a, <laughs> never had a slip disc. <laughs> knees have been surgically repaired. <laughs> so uh i just need glasses to drive now that's all <laughs> i need glasses to be able to read my phone all right that's what i need glasses for you see i to read my phone well, don't need glasses i need because i, need I just do this to do everything <laughs> uh you know but i need extra glasses to read my phone now so <laughs> Uh, yeah, if if I, if I weren't able to remove my glasses, I would have an issue. But with my glasses off, my eyes are like, "Hey, everything's right there, exactly where I want." Oh, just give it time. I used to be that young, <laughs> so you know, but not anymore. But yeah, you you reach an age where they go, "Hey, it's time for that exam," and we all know what that exam is. And as my as my sister in law told me. I can now report that I am a perfect asshole. So, you know, and I have the pictures to prove it. Uh, we're not going to go through that photo gallery today on the show. <laughs> but, you know. No, we will not. <laughs> we absolutely will not. I will but, quit. Yeah. <laughs> but I have another 10 years before I have to go through it again. So, you know. It's like, it's like jury duty. <sighs> but, you know, it's... It, it's an important, important thing to do, and you know, probably not enough people do it. So, you know, I was talking to our, our old pal Nate, and he has not gone through it. And I said, I, it's it's not nearly as big of a pain in the ass as most people think, uh, literally <laughs> or figuratively. I'm like, you know, and besides, they give you Lorne and Dunes and apple juice when you're done. So what could be better? Cookies and juice. Uh, going to Dollar Tree and getting my own damn Lorna Dunes and well, apple juice for $2. Maybe, but, you know. So, yeah. that was and The irony here is that I am the oldest of, on the show, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah. So I, 
I have not had that procedure yet. Why not, Mike? I have been told that next year is the year. 50. No, 45 is the year. If you have... Depends on the doctor. See, my doctor has been uh, doing uh, blood tests. And he's like, as long as this blood test is, you know, the, this number is this low, then we'll see this year, you know. It's 45 if you have family history or other underlying conditions. Otherwise, my insurance won't pay for it unless until I'm 50. Really? Because the CDC yeah. says it should begin at 45. So they F the CDC. You they know. have not proven to be very reliable over the past three years. Well, um, you know. So, yeah. Well, how about the Chicago School of Medicine? Are they any better? Or are they just crooks and frauds? The Chicago School of Medicine. School. American American Cancer Society. How about them? Do you trust them? Them I trust. They say 45 now, too? Newest guidelines recommend that colorectal cancer screens begin at age 45. Okay. See, I haven't. Apparently, my insurance company hasn't gotten the memo for that one yet. So uh, They're probably worried about but TPS. You're research. supposed to get start screening. But whether... What what makes up that screening is the question. That okay, that's fair. It says Which, to first, Colin's point, if your blood work does not show any irregularities, then your doctor is not going to send you for a test. And we're talking about a colonoscopy for those of you who haven't figured it out yet. Yeah, uh, Mama Blair saying at least you don't have to show bifocal lines anymore. I do not know who she was referring to with the bifocals but oh i got them you got i, I got bifocals there's no well question. i do recall like my grand and i'm not implying as an age thing here mama blair so don't send the clan after me um the cl clan blair are showing up at, with pitchforks <laughs> on, my, on my freaking porch I do recall, like, my grandfather having bifocals, and back then it was literally they cut two lenses and chopped them together and put them in the frame. wasn't one lens ground differently. Yeah. Yeah, so, like a, you know. I had, like, that two-inch zone of, you know, no-fly zone where you can't see a damn thing because there's just ground glass there. Yeah. You know, so, but yeah, it's get. I am getting older. Uh, by the way, I want to. Uh, I'll make both of you happy. So between uh, now and maybe the next show, if not, then the show after, uh, the, the studio is going to go through a little bit of a remodel. Uh, the, the the machine here that broadcasts the show is going to be mo relocated uh, because got a new piece of equipment. Got myself a new video card. So, you know, okay. and I want to just move it to the other side of the room and move the mixer to the other side of the room. Okay. And so, yep. So next show, expect lots of audio issues. Yep. And no, <laughs> we'll have no audio show. You'll have no audio issues. The next show will go off perfectly in March of 2026. <laughs> So, yes, yeah. March of 2026, that will be when I will have relocated somewhere and my studio will be in shambles. <laughs> no. Perhaps. Well, let's see. 26 is going to be what? I'll be. You'll only be three I'll years be three. older. Three years older. OK, not quite. Not quite there for retirement yeah. yet. 55 is my plan. To, to see, now see. I could retire technically at 52. At 52, I could retire. I don't know. retire from your, the state. Yeah, yeah. Because then that's yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's they have a rule of 85 and out. So you add your age plus your years of service, and if it comes up to 85, then you can hit the hit the bricks. Is it a modified rule of 85? What do you mean? Okay, so 
where I work has, I thought it was the rule of 75, right? So mm -hmm. age plus years of service. However, it's a modified rule of 75, which states that at least 30 of the 75 must be years of service. Oh, I'm sure there's a minimum service requirement, but I don't know what it is. However, and I don't care enough to look up in the manual. Things have changed enough that the rule of 75, modified or not, basically means squat yeah. anymore. So. Yeah. I, I ha there are people that retire at 52 and then immediately start looking for another job, you know, because they know that they cannot survive uh, on their retirement, which is, you know, roughly – 50% of what their take-home pay was for the last three years, you know, because we have a pension system here. Uh, and so, you know, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, even though I could retire at 52, I don't see myself doing it. You know, I see myself going, yeah, probably at least 55, maybe 60. Just because I, I would, I would go nuts I'd have to either find another job or do something. And if I'm going to find another job, why don't I just stay in the one that I'm at? You know, why would I go and create another career? You know, I know. And, See, and the idea the is you're not creating another career. You are actually getting a job. Hi, welcome to Walmart. <laughs> I'm not going to go back to minimum wage. My name's Shaggy. <laughs> that is one of the most applied for positions at Walmart. I'll have you know. Uh, so, I know it is. I know. Yeah. I'm already planning on name dropping it. Like, like the apparently my general manager when I left BJ's Wholesale Club is now the East Coast Regional Manager at the corporate <laughs> office. So I plan on dropping her name when I retire and being like, Yeah, I used to work for Lori Anderson. When <laughs> she she was my GM when I drove a forklift back way back in the day. <laughs> Can I be the guy stand here to do the receipt now? Yes. <laughs> mm, let's see here. Okie dokie. There you go. Have a nice day. Let me just make sure. Okay, your Coca-Cola is all Coca-Cola in that case. Okay. Yep, diapers. You didn't Check. <laughs> I'm sorry. You forgot to scan your rotisserie chicken. Please go back to membership. No, that's 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 going to be my job. I'd <laughs> no, say the cart guy, but no, I don't want that You're not pushing job. carts. You're not pushing carts at <laughs> 60, Mike. Maybe the guy that uh, the guy that refills the propane. <laughs> then I can really just hang out there all day. You know, propane is perhaps one of the very cleanest energies that we have out here. Um, I highly recommend it. You're at a party. You go, I sell propane remember, and propane accessories. There you go. Propane. I remember the propane accessories. Ah, uh, uh, yes. I used to say all the time, like, like growing up, my goal was to, to work until I could live comfortably off of my savings because back then I didn't know about 401K. And then my job, I was going to quit and work at Blockbuster. <laughs> because Good at that point, I will have seen so many movies, even back then, that <laughs> I would be the great person. What What are you looking for? What do you like? Well, let me t let me give you some suggestions. Well, that that plan really had future proof written all over it, didn't it? Well, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I actually, so, uh, actually, there, that was a a side effect of uh, me changing jobs that I didn't realize was a thing. So. I, I I do have a four hundred one k, and but I had to transfer the four hundred one k from my previous employer, mm -hmm. so I moved it to an IRA because it was just easier to do it that way. Well, then I, then I found out, hey, you know, if you got this lump of money sitting in a four hundred one k, you can actually, you know, there are stocks that you can buy that give you things just for owning their stock. So. On my cruise, I just went ahead and bought some cruise stock, so I got an extra hundred dollars of onboard credit just because I bought some stock. 
Okay, so here like, is okay. So this is this is a well. How much? Well, wait, 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 how much? How much stock did you buy though? A uh, hundred shares. So you got a dollar for every share. You have to have a hundred shares to get the credit. The perks. Okay. Yeah. So, so I just found a list of fifteen in-demand jobs for seniors. Let's see if you would want to take any of these on. Okay. Let's try it. All right. Uh, Teaching, becoming a substitute teacher. Hell no. Not unless, it, not unless I am living in a state where teachers are allowed to carry guns. Because damn it, <laughs> I've seen some of these videos where teachers are getting beat up. Yeah. For enforcing the school rules. Uh uh. That ain't gonna be me, Jack. That one that got knocked unconscious and broken ribs for taking away a switch. Yeah. Uh, nope. Not col college instructor. Possibly, yeah. Because Possibly. kids are dumb enough to pay to go to co pay to go to school. They're go they're there to learn. No, they're not. They're there to party. Their parents were dumb enough to pay for their school. Okay, well, most fine. of them. Administrative assistant. I am not going to be somebody's bitch. <laughs> uh, it includes secretaries. Receptionist, information clerks. Oh, that's what I want to do. Work at an information booth when I'm a senior. Although that'd be a so, great place to tell people stories. Hold on now, because they have information booths everywhere, okay? So, yeah, like, at, at they're the rolling out being the information guy at, at, at the Disney counter that Colin is going to do when he retires. Yeah. So, there's, listen, there. So information, maybe, depends on where. I'm not going to work at, like, the mall kiosk. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Can you tell me where Hot Topic is? Up your ass. That's where it is. Go. Get away from me. <laughs> Hold your pants. You don't need any more nose rings. Uh... Yeah, Shaggy and I would be the absolute most annoying data entry <laughs> workers of all time. <laughs> because, cause, cause, you know, Shaggy would be calling up the help desk saying, hey, yeah, I'm having trouble with uh, the the – my mouth, entry application. My, my mouse ball needs well, clean. Well, this field over here isn't the meeting uh, spec five seven point two six of the accessibility standards. <laughs> Why is this tab order so stupid? <laughs> uh, nursing jobs as uh, personal care aides, registered nurses, home health aides. No, and no. Bob Blair writes in. Apparently, I am just subconsciously on a mission to piss somebody off tonight. <laughs> Mama Blair says, I was an admin assistant for most of my career, and I was no one's bitch. Well, listen, times have changed. I've seen administrative assistants now. Yeah. They tr they're treated different. It's a lot different. And it, it definitely yeah, she, depends but, on where you work, where you yeah. work and who you work for. Because there are some places where the administrative assistants run the place, Yes. And then there are other places where it's still circa Mad Men. All right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally, her job was to run the place. I don't, we don't know. I have no idea why she had that title. Because she literally, it wasn't just that she was like, you know, here's the, here's the boss and here's the woman who was going around. And, no, she literally was running the program. Uh, here's another one. Real estate agent. You gonna go get your real estate license and start brokering deals when you're here's the problem. Sixty Here, plus here is the problem with that. The problem with me being a real estate agent is I would turn into Leo Getz. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, absolutely okay, would. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 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 okay. Listen, listen. <laughs> Hello? Did you tell me about the nail good thing? Full disclosure, I gotta tell these people about these things. <laughs> Oh, or well, I, from like Step Brothers, where I'd be like hiring people. I see. I'd be like all shady about I, it. I'd right? be. I'd be the old guy who is showing a house to a young couple who's just looking for the first house, and I go, I wouldn't buy this one. Got to go upstairs to go to the bathroom. You know, you want nice ranch level where you don't got to no, deal see, with stairs. I'd never I, sell I'd, a multi-story house. I'd be take I'd be the real estate agent taking bribes from the neighbors. Be like, okay, listen, <laughs> you tell me what kind of neighbors you want, and I'll make sure to filter out some of these offers here. But it's going to cost you. 
I'd be the one that uh, that works for the buyers who go, okay, listen, let's let's grease some palms of your of your crappy neighbors, make them behave for a couple of days while we bring some suspect buyers over here. You know, what, what is that? I'd, funny farm? Yeah, exactly. Next one, uh, part-time sales job. Yeah, you want to be a retail worker at J.C. Penney's? No, I would be a car salesman, though. <laughs> really? You want to become a low life? You want to throw people's cars no. up on the roof until they buy a new one? No, no because car salesman, car salesman, car salesman is going to basically just be a paperwork person it, now. It, it's high-pressure sales, though. Because if you don't it, make it, not if, if you're retired. If you're com- – yeah. you no. Know, Every car salesman I know has always worked on commission. If you don't make the sales, you don't keep the job. Right, but okay, when you're fine. retired, you just want somewhere that will give you free coffee and let you, you know, talk to people for a <laughs> talk bit. Talk to people all day. So you're just as long bounce, as you're not. You're yeah, as long as you're not the finance to another. guy. <laughs> as long as you're not the finance guy, because that's the sleazy role. Just being oh, a salesman. Yeah, yeah, the finance guy, that's the guy when you get in, they get you in the back room and he calls to the door and he's like, okay, listen. Oh, well, you need the Simonize. I can sell you the Simonize. I can sell you the lifetime car washes. I can, And you want the extended warranty. Right? Oh, and you want the ceramic coating. Ceramic coating, of course. Oh, oh window etching. Yeah. You need serial numbers well, etched on your windows. Yeah, what happens if somebody steals your and car? And your catalytic converter, that's the new one. We etch right into your catalytic converter <laughs> because people steal. <laughs> anyway. Uh, driver jobs. So truck drivers, taxi drivers, chauffeurs, and bus drivers. Let's think about. Do you want to be haul? You want to be a party bus driver when you're old no, and crotchety? I don't want to be a bus driver. I don't want to be a bus driver. Period. Because uh, that could be like school bus and hell no. I was thinking um, like bachelorette parties, <laughs> or or these no these winter shopping no. trips for old ladies. No, well, no, because there's cleanup involved with these things, man. Yeah. That's not happening. You know how hard it is to get glitter out of Naugahyde? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing <laughs> it. Uh, but taxi driver, Mike. A cab driver. A taxi cab driver? driver. I would be a taxi driver if it was like taxi cab confessionals. I would if it was like DC cab. Well... If that means I got to ride around with somebody like Gary Busey, I don't think I could do that. No, I drive with Mr. T. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that either. In in the pimp taxi, hearing all of his gold chains over every pothole and bump. Oh no, no, that would drive me nuts, man. Uh, joining the clergy in retirement. <laughs> Let's just John move on from lived that one. All your life, and now you're going to turn to God? Nah. Well, you can't just, make it up in the just end. Let's move on. Providing Although, child. Although, wait a second, though. Actually, I would, I would actually put my ordainment to good use, and I would consider doing, doing like, weddings. Uh, like, well, doing weddings and stuff then. Uh, you know, fig- yeah. finally actually do it. Like, put your name out there in papers, going, hey, want to yeah. get hitched? Hire. I can know. be. I will be your, I am the one-stop shop budget DJ and officiant. And then you could get some of those little Instamatic cameras and say, and photographer. Or maybe I would buy, maybe I buy a photo booth off of Timu. Yeah. There you go. Anyway. Uh, Providing child care in retirement. No comment. Something just tells me no comment on that one. Just move on because yep. I'll – nope, move on. Taking on a management role – oh, here it is. Before retirement, they shift into new positions as managers just prior to retirement. Okay, well, that just means that they want to bump up their retirements. You know, That's yeah. pretty common, actually, with the state is you move from a union position to a non-union position like your last four years – because then you're locked into the four-year contract. They average your retirement based off of your last three years. So you get that salary bump for your retirement. And that's that's working the system. Yep. So they actually, if you, you know, they actually banned that in that type of move in New Jersey for the pension system. Yeah? Yes. Yeah, they have it. I don't think they have in Illinois yet. No, because too many people take advantage of it. Yes. 
Now, there is a similar job of just being a professional interim boss. Yeah. You know, you lose your boss and you're trying to find a new one. I'll be your, I'll, I'll be the manager for two months. Uh, here you and go. I, Use your experience career. as a management consultant. <laughs> I was going to say, I will be a consultant. That's what I will do. I will walk around and tell you how to stream. I will be the boss. Mm-hmm. I'll walk around and tell you how to streamline your business. Yep, an efficiency consultant. Or, you know, doing some stupid stuff like, okay, I'm the guy, I'm going to be that guy that everybody in town calls when their internet gets screwed up. So as I come over and I set up old people's routers and cell phones and all of that, you know, or do like repairs. Oh, you don't want to do that. Trust me. You don't want to do that because then you're help desk forever. I'm already help desk, whatever. Uh, Mama Blair says, how about teacher's aides or substitute teachers? Yeah, that that was number one on the list. And times have changed now. And uh, yeah, my comment to that: forget hazard pay. I'd said I'd have to. I'd have to be allowed to carry a gun. Yep. Because uh, become a writer in retirement. Write about what? Gonna, That's the key. Gonna, thing. gonna write short stories. You're gonna become a blogger. Um. Engineering I mean, positions. I mean, musician gigs. I'm an engineer now. I, I could retire and become like a, a DJ at the bar. Do I be a karaoke DJ? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Yep. So that was that was your list of uh, of 15 in demand jobs for retirees. Oh, no, they, they, you know, they're, they're missing bartender. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, old bartender, I stay up that light. Oh, bartender at the Knights of Columbus. Those are usually members. <laughs> so. Yeah, well, yeah, but they, instead of paying dues, they hang out at the bar. Yeah. So it's something to do. Uh, yeah, nobody, karaoke DJ at age 65, nobody's going to want to see a 65-year-old singing uh, Marky Mark, Good Vibrations. It, it's going to get old kind of quick. Yeah. Um, what are you rapping Informer for by Snow? That doesn't. <laughs> right, so, speaking of DJ. You know what it's ignorant of down. Since the last to show. down. Yeah, I had an event that I had to DJ. Yes, this How was, was it? one of my first. Oh well, it was. We had a great time. Uh, it was for the rescue that we adopted Tucker from. Actually, I had two. I think since mm-hmm. the last show. Cool. I had one for the local cat rescue that does TNR in the neighborhood. So that was a tricky tray, a smaller one at the Knights of Columbus. Uh, I don't recall them putting out a number of what they raised, but they had a pretty good night. Uh, and that was right in town. So, real quick, finished up quick, two hundred something baskets. Um, everybody had a good time. The other one was up, was a little further away. Um, that was for the rescue we adopted Tucker from. They raised about eight thousand dollars last last I had heard. I don't know if that was the final tally or not. And everybody had a great time at that one too. There was, that one was only about thirty five baskets, but somehow it seemed to take much longer which left everyone scratching their heads as to how did you get through 200 baskets at the other one? And the answer is simple. They had young runners move quickly and lots of them. Mm -hmm. So folks, here's a free tip. If you're going to have a basket raffle or a tricky tray, uh, call like the local boy scouts or something or girl scouts or the high school athletic team that needs community service hours and get Mm -hmm. them to be your basket runners. Yeah. Because they're quick. But yep. it did make me realize one thing, Shay, that I needed to, I need to uh, work smarter and not harder. And I need to lighten up my 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 gear. Yeah. Like so I I, I actually have uh, powered speakers coming Friday tomorrow. Because I'm, I'm tired of lugging around the big old 15-inch Yamaha with the amp. And my back just can't do it anymore, man. Yeah, that's why I put mine on wheels. Uh, let's see. I thought about that. But so I have, yeah. I have them in, the, the powered speakers I have in bags. So yeah. they're actually easy to carry. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. I, you know... For my stepson's wedding, I bought myself a little, because where they were getting married, they didn't have any power. 
And I thought, well, I know they want music, and they were just going to bring one of those little bitty, like, Bluetooth speakers. And I'm like, well, I can do better than that, plus it's an excuse to buy something. <laughs> uh, so I bought myself this. It's it's not huge. It's just it's got an 8-inch woofer on it. Uh, but it's, you know, a dec- it's a, you know, decent-sized speaker. And, uh, you know, and it's battery-powered. It's, it's a Bluetooth FM. It's got two quarter-inch inputs on it, um, you know. And I actually played it in the backyard the other day. It lasted, like, I, I played it for three and a half hours, and it didn't even show that the battery was low or anything, um, you know. And I just played it Bluetooth, but still. It's a nice little box just for if you want music and you don't want to have to pull a cord out anywhere. Um, you know, so I used it so for their I event. Have, so I have one of the tailgate speakers over here, like the original Ion tailgate speaker. And yeah. I had to replace the battery in it. I replaced it with a uh, um, what is it? Li- 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 lipo? lipo? Or, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah lipo. Uh, yep. Lithium, lithium iron phosphate. Lithium. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that thing, the thing will last 10 hours easily yeah. and that's that's good for like backyard parties or yeah or small events where you just want to i loaned it to a friend for her 50th birthday and it was just like a lunch or dinner kind of thing and she just hooked that up with the ipod left it there let it play the entire playlist like 80s music uh come on old school dj cisco right in no listen dude i i if you're talking old school like henny the dj um, I, I, I can't do it, man. When I, I if when I, I, I want to do, I want to DJ at bars that have like the system where you just come and you bring your USB and just hook it up and use their. When crap. I first I, I, started DJing, I borrowed equipment from a buddy, uh, from, from my old neighbor who had a band and the only speakers that he had were dual 15 inch woofers and this big ass horn on the top so i had to haul two of those they were about five feet tall a piece and probably weighed 120 pounds each and i borrowed his amp and i swear it was 150 pounds because it was old school like 70s amp I mean, and it was like carpeted, you know, wooden box crate amp. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, then I still had to carry everything else. And that's when I was bringing my personal, like, PC rig with me. I didn't have laptops. So, you know, I, I had a truck full of stuff, and it was just barely enough. And we didn't have LED lights. I rented lights from a place, and they were the old school par cans and everything. So, I mean, it was just massive when i first started doing stuff and i actually lost out on a sweet 16 party the 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 pto president that was that got me my first house residency at the uh the grammar school here in town he reached out and asked me if i they were doing a sweet 16 for his daughter he's like would you would you be willing to dj i i led with this i said listen if you're looking for lights smoke and all the, all that kind of pomp and circumstance i'm not your guy because right. i don't own any of that and i'm not get, mm-hmm. so if you're just looking for good music with a personality and uh, i could do that we yeah. can talk and the sad part is the dude never even replied to me to tell me otherwise and i'm like oh i wonder what ever happened oh well the party was supposed to be last weekend so i guess uh i didn't get the job yeah <laughs> Yeah, I had I had one one girl who was asking me about what I did for weddings and was all about, well, you know, do you have all these different pictures of all these different weddings you did and all that, you know, do you have videos? And and I'm just like, I don't think I'm your guy. I'm like, no, I, I, I think you're probably looking for more than what I'm comfortable delivering. Uh, I, I think you'd probably be better suited by going with somebody else. It's like I, I don't. I don't. If you think the DJ is going to come and decorate your wedding for you, um, I'm, I'm just like that's. It, it's not me. <laughs> it's, it's not me. Do you all do eye sculptures and <laughs> illusions with your with your package? Because I would like them too. Can you do that? No, I can't. I can I hold on. I'll show you the extent of my.
<laughs> that's the extent of my my light show. That's your pyrotechnics display, huh? That's my pyrotechnics right there. <laughs> I mean, I have lights. I have some lights, and I have I have a fog machine. But the problem is, what I have found is, I can't. The venues don't want you to use fog. No, because yeah. it sets off the smoke detectors. Yeah, exactly, and that's a huge cost and everything else. Plus, if you have what these you know couples don't understand is you've got grandma and grandpa in the audience who don't breathe well to begin with and now you're so, pumping fog into the room you know so here's the thing what the what the dj what the real djs do now it's not fog it's dry ice yeah that they're making the fog yeah. with it's not the chemical stuff like we we grew up with right. inhaling and probably i'm surprised we don't all have like a third eye but right we, it's different. Well, and, some of yeah, it is, but I, some of it's still couple, like haze. But yeah, yeah it just I mean, depends I, on what I they're trying to do. Of, uh, I got a couple of cheap par lights just to light up underneath my table, basically. Right. That's about all it'll do. But I'm not invested in that. Now, when I retire, I don't know, maybe I'll invest in some kind of like backdrop and I could do a projector that'll do all fancy stuff behind me. Oh, but, I was looking you know, at something easy. Speaking of Timu, I was looking at Timu. Timu has an LED uh, blanket. Is that what I was looking at? Um, LED blanket. Yeah, it, it was. It was a or backdrop. I don't know what it was. It was. It was basically. Okay, that makes more sense. An LED blanket. Like, okay, I'm, watch, I'm watching TV on my bed. You know? No. What? What are you talking about? It's. It's like this. It's like multiple strips of LEDs, and they like make patterns. Patterns and crap. Yeah, like a curtain, and they can they can do, like, patterns, like a Pac-Man going across it. It's like an LED wall, but it's like the cheap Chinese version of an LED wall. <laughs> I'll have to find it. So, uh, okay, yeah, no, Mike, when, when you retire and you do your all-inclusive your wedding thing, it, it could be you know, Butterstown weddings. You know, it's all, you know, you do the invitations. You do well, the decorations, yes. you, you know. You do the bridal do, party gifts. Kim, Kim can do all the favors, the bridal party. Yes, that's right. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Cisco just got a drone from Timu. Okay. The one thing I will say, okay, so Timu stuff, the, the quality is is questionable. I, th I think we established that. Yeah. But yeah. It gets here fast. Now, my last Timu order was late. So I got the five dollar credit. Oh, look at you! So, so I, I did. I just really found out what was going on with Timu. So okay. they are they're basically doing the uh, the Walmart thing. They're 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 squeezing all the little um, factories there in China, and they're going up to them and saying. Oh yeah, you make this. We, we would like to sell that on Timu. I said, great. Uh, that costs ten dollars. No, it doesn't. It costs three dollars. Uh, they're like, oh, okay. And so they're all these factories are making stuff for Timu, but they're actually losing money. And Timu is losing money because uh, they're they're subsidizing all of the uh, the shipping, trying to get themselves large enough. They're, they're doing exactly what Amazon did back before Amazon was making money. They're just spending money to get people to buy stuff until they're big enough that they can start charging the actual prices. There you go, Mike. That's what it is. And it's going to look nothing like that. <laughs> so, see, all right. So, yeah, say it. it nope. Oh, that's what you need. It'll look exactly like that, where it's just yes. little bitty strings. And you better be in a pitch black it, room. It'll, do, it'll look like an equalizer behind you, but for sixty eight dollars, <laughs> nope, don't need it. <laughs> don't need it. I'll lose money trying to. I mean, you can you can build your own, but you know so, why? When now, Timu here, has okay, it. so here's the problem with Timu. Like, I'll go on Timu and I'll just look, start looking at stuff and I'll be like, oh, that's only a dollar. Well, it's only. Next thing I know, I got like 50 things in my cart. And I'm yeah. like, I don't need any of these. You know, no. I start having second, I start second guessing. And then I got a, I got that last delivery. And Kim's like, 
you ordered from Timo? I said, yeah, well, it was late. It, it, it was a while ago. And she said, well, I wanted something. I thought, I wish I knew. I would have told you. I'm like, well, okay, well, tell me what it is. Maybe I'll order, do another order or whatever. Everything is smaller than it appears in the mirror. What? Well, what? We still talking about Timu here, or <laughs> do, do you need to call in and, and 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 talk about this? I mean, but yeah, I mean it's uh, you know, yeah, it's it's no different I, than Wish or anybody else. Yeah, I I bought a uh, flag for my cubicle. The, the flag that says uh, you bought a flag. We don't do these. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, who, who it's not, it's not a country flag. Who, who are you hustling in on? Huh? No, it's not a country what flag. What, what kind it's of flag it's, it's a message flag. It's, it's the flag that says we don't we're, we don't do these things because they're easy. We do these things because we thought they were easy. Okay, so you're oh, you got quote jokes. of the day, man. You got jokes now, huh? All you right. got jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you got you. Yeah. Oh, funny it, man. It, 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 it funny. well portrays yeah. everything we do as programmers. It's like funny flag, man. That's what the, the Colin's a funny flag, man. So just, I, I, I'm definitely not getting lots of flags like Shaggy because so. I don't have anything to cover up to protect the, the privacy of my other customers. <laughs> uh, or artwork, apparently. Well, it looks like you got a mural back there now. Yeah, that's yeah, what's going that's, on. Uh, it's one of the grandkids, you know. Okay. One of the activities to keep them quiet is to have them come down here and draw on the whiteboard. So I just haven't cleaned it off. <laughs> that and I was designing a piece of a program, and I haven't cleaned that off either yet. So. Uh, yeah. All right. So I I. We've got a bunch of stuff, well, not really a bunch of stuff, but we have stuff on the white sheet, and there are some things that I think we need to discuss here. Yes. Uh, so it has been a month since, to the day, it's been a month since we last were on the air. Yeah. And yes, that we, we've talked about why, but I want, I want to, I'm going to call it to task here. I believe someone on this show has gotten into the political lobbying realm you know I in agree. an effort to lure a specific company from one state to another to make I, it more convenient for this person to, to frequent off. this company yeah i agree i i i because know, when i think of this company i think of this person well no <laughs> i think of this state when i think of disney the first place i think of is Hmm. If Disney wasn't in Florida, I think they'd be a great fit in Illinois. Yeah. It, Mickey Mouse and corn go together so well. Mickey Mouse, Mickey ear shaped horseshoes. Actually, it, it, the product sells itself. Okay. Yeah, That's much. a billion dollar idea well, that would cause Disney to want to be there. Well, except for this, this development is going up near Chicago. So you have to think of Mickey with two guns and, you know, a gun in each hand. More well, Yosemite Sam than Mickey Mouse, really. Uh, uh, also covered of snow. Yeah. But they need to do this quickly because in 30 days, Chicago will be closing for pr practically uh, an entire week to host a NASCAR road race Yeah. in downtown Chicago. Yep. You got you to you actually get me to watch an NASCAR race. You got to jump the river. We're going to watch we're it this time up because it's the bridges and you got to jump. I the river. doubt they're going to come back. The cars are actually going to run mufflers for the first time. They're putting mufflers on 600 horsepower NASCAR race cars because they got people meet emission in standards. Chicago said these cars might be too loud. <laughs> so NASCAR in have they never their been to Chicago said, under the L when it comes through? <laughs> we will put mufflers on these cars. The great city of Chicago has a district by the park where there are plenty of vendors and restaurants and shops and what have you. NASCAR has said you cannot be open because you are in a critical area of the road course. We will pay you approximately a week's 
income because you can't be open for one day for one for well for like three days three days what does monte carlo get when they close their roads <laughs> Well, that, that's you're F1. talking about that's F one. F one is ridiculous as far as like the amount of spending yeah, they, going on. Yeah, they right. they, they make more F1. money when it's there. there. An article popped up about an F one where there was a wreck and they had to use a crane to lift the car out, off the track because of where it was, mm -hmm. and it got so high. Next thing you know, everybody's got cameras taking pictures of the underside because apparently the underside of an F one car is the most guarded secret to the aerodynamic properties of that car. Uh-huh. And everybody's looking at it saying, now we know why they were so fast. Now, this is reminding me of a very, very old video game that Spy I Hunter. wish someone would bring back. Midtown Madness. What the uh, Tiger Beefy? No, that was Midnight Madness. What? Never heard of Midtown Madness. Oh, it was uh, it was two games out from Microsoft that you basically were um, racing around inside of real cities. Okay. okay it, so, it wasn't terribly realistic, but it was more fun that way. So let's see here. So, oops. Uh, they also had a monster truck it. madness that's very similar, except you had a monster truck. Okay, so here is the course layout for yep. the NASCAR in Chicago. Oh, they're also making them turn in, in yes, two different they're, directions. Yes, they have to turn left and right. And a sharp turn too. Yeah. I mean, that that point right there in the middle does that that really does feel kind of dangerous. What? I'm sure there's a big block there, but. They have those cars, you know, going directly at each other. What here? No. Right there it in the middle. Does it go? Yeah, you, you saw mean about... between one and yeah, six. Turns one and six. Yep. Yeah, I don't know that they'll yeah. be that that close together. I have no idea. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't. I did. I'm saying it's probably going to be bare. It's just the fact that there are going to be cars. Oh, no, it's going the other direction. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. So, you know. And I well, don't know. Because they're, they're, they're going no, opposite they're, directions. They're, right. They're going opposite directions. All right. I was thinking they'd be going around the other, the other way. If they're going the other way, then they'd be going towards the center, not yeah. driving from the center. Well, the, oh, I guess they are. No, I'm the, sorry. They, they yeah, are doing it from left and right. So okay. they're going to start off at the Fountain Club. Yep. Head up through uh, to, towards Lakefront Green. Uh, go around uh, uh, DeSable Lakeshore Drive. Come back in on South Columbus Drive, East Balibo Drive. Uh, make their way towards East Congressional Plaza Drive, South Michigan, East Jackson Drive, and then end up back in front of Fan Plaza. And right, that's so the course. Let, well, while, you, while you have this up, let's... Mm -hmm. So, yes, so from turns 12 to, into turn 1, from past the start-finish yep. line, and from turn yep. 5 to turn 6, coming down South Columbus, well, actually, they're both on South Columbus, those are the two longest straightaways, and the cars are heading at each other going into those yep. turns. Right. So, but yes, that, that, is, that, that is potentially dangerous. That being said, I don't know exactly how close they are, and I'm sure they put something up between them. Now, yeah, the president. I'm not Paddock saying it actually is club? dangerous. I'm just saying it is interesting oh, no, to it, see them going toward each other. Yeah, I think, I think it's. I think this is going to be a disaster, to be quite honest. But President's Paddock Club, those seats are going for, and this is in this is in downtown freaking Chicago. Tickets yeah. are going for three thousand dollars a ticket in the Paddock Club. Yeah, I mean, when I go to Chicago, I walk down Michigan Avenue, so you know it's 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 definitely browsable or walkable. So, 
Yeah. And I don't know that I've ever been to that, Fan Plaza, though, when I'm going. I, maybe I don't go that far south when I'm meandering downtown. But, <clears throat> in fact, I'm pretty sure I don't because I don't, I don't think I've ever seen East Congressional Plaza. Now, is that actually a river that no, East Jackson and – no, this is not a river. Okay. I think that's a uh, that's a, a train. Uh, I believe that's okay, train yeah, tracks. Yeah, yeah. All right. Now that you say it, yeah, I can make that out. It it actually would be kind of cool if it was a river, but I know. think I really think they missed the mark by not putting it at some point over the river and having the drawbridges at least partially up, so that the car <laughs> had to jump the river at some point. Not right. That would be, I mean, that would be awesome. And come on, tell me you don't want to see a NASCAR car jump the Chicago River. Everybody wants to see that. I mean, real life Duke's a hazard. Who? Come on, everybody wants to see that. People would pay a, extra no, to be there. I have a very sneaking suspicion this is going to be a one and done. Well, or if it is is a success, then they're going to find more cities around the U.S. to have this at. And maybe we can tear down all of the NASCAR courses and just do it in cities. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah, we can turn all of the NASCAR courses. Considering NASCAR actually owns most of the tracks that they race at. uh, Maybe this will be a new brand of NASCAR. We'll call it, you know... Urban NASCAR. That's what we should do. So I'm going to send you a picture. Uh huh. Uh, let me just get it. So, because <clears throat> this is, since we're talking about that, mm-hmm. this is what I have recommended. Many times over. If they're going to do this. And I think they should. This is. You throw that up. Yep. Working on it. Give me one second. And I'll be right there. Ugh. Now this is an older. Map. If you will. But. This was a proposed layout, and I believe they may have actually run this either cart or IndyCar. This is in New Jersey, and as you can Mm -hmm. see, Giant Stadium, which is now MetLife Stadium. Continental Air Arena is actually now the IZOD Center, but it's still there, and I don't know if it's still called the IZOD Center. But they should do this. They want to have a race in New York, New Jersey? There you go. There's a road course for you. Yep. Not, I, and as incentive, I will DJ. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. For for a modest fee. You'll give them a discount, right? I I will DJ for VIP tickets. That's it. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 I, I just want a box. That's all. all right. So it, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. Well, that is that that's good news, Mike. I agree. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, let's see here. Other uh, Something else, Mike, that you, you put up there. We've talked Which before in the, on the show about the tipping culture. Now, we're not talking about that culture is at a critical tipping point where it's going down the toilet. Uh, what we're talking <laughs> oh. about here is uh, the culture of who you tip, how much you tip, uh, when you tip. Uh, you know, and that uh, to some degree, it, it, it it's a crapshoot uh, whether you're supposed to tip or not and how we all agree that it should just be like Europe and what you pay is what you pay and you don't tip jack. Uh, you know, just pay the people a living wage and let's get away from this tipping garbage. Um, you know, but Mike, you put up an article which with the explosion in AI recently, uh, you know, begs the question of 
is this okay? Is this what we should be doing or not? Oh, no. Look, okay. This absolutely is not okay. I'm not going to take this. I'm not standing for this. The whole... When a self-checkout lane is suggesting a tip, that's a problem. Especially when it's the self-checkout at Walmart where they're asking, would you like to leave a tip? <laughs> so, and, and well, to, be clear, folks, for a sec. to be clear, folks, we're not talking about a donation to charity or a no. roundup uh, for no. kids' food pantry or a please rate our service, which all of those things are equally as annoying. Uh, you know, uh, you, we're not even talking about a, hey, for a dollar we'll give you a, a – a password to go through a secret door where you won't be harassed by people out just outside the door selling Girl Scout cookies or T-shirts for, you know, the underprivileged youth or anything like that. We're not talking about those useful things. Uh, we're talking about something completely different where you want to tip a computer. All right. So I have a question. I want to get your guys' thoughts on this one. So a lot of the, like, the smaller restaurants, the independent restaurants and what have you, they're using like Square or yep. similar for, you know, I, I call them the iPad checkouts. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. If you go to a restaurant and pick up a, an order, like a pizza place, you called in the order and you drive there and you pick it up. Mm -hmm. Do you leave a tip when you pay? You know, I, Not didn't, really. I didn't used to leave a tip ever. Um, I have gotten to the point where I'm like, you know what, if I have a buck or two in my wallet, just the, the random ones, sometimes I'll throw it in the tip jar, but I'm not putting it on my card. I, I was well, tipping during COVID days. So I was like, okay, you guys are coming in to make pizzas for me when this world is shut down. Okay. Uh, I, I, I was, and I have a good job that isn't affected by all this. Okay, fine. I, I, I will send out more tips to the food, to the food workers. So you think just because the pandemic is over, they're no longer COVID warriors? I, I, I'm saying they are. The, the COVID warriors have moved on to new jobs, and <laughs> these are just the the people who couldn't who didn't get any other jobs. Which you know there are many jobs out there. So anyway, no, I'm so not going to give you I, a tip for I, I do a handing you a pizza. So I, what I will say is. Like during COVID, I found myself tipping more than I would yeah. normally. Mm -hmm. That so that kind of lines up with Colin that I normally wouldn't tip, but I would tip when I went to pick up, you know, a couple of bucks. If if someone actually took my order, like at, when I used to go to the diner to and I would place a to-go order, and I'd sit at the counter and have a cup of coffee while I waited, I would tip the waitress that took my order. Okay. Yes. What if it, she actually did something. She actually bagged it up for me. And I'll, okay, fine. Yeah. What if it's curbside where you called in the order, but then you parked outside and they walked it out to you? I don't do that. You don't, you, you don't do that? But yes, if, do if I'm doing that, I'm telling you, if I'm going to any normal place, that isn't a fast food. Like if I if I decide to go to IHOP and have them give me a, a take home order, okay? I know that it's the wait staff who actually take the food and stick it in all those plastic boxes that IHOP uses. Mm -hmm. But she is an amazing amount of packaging. If you guys have never gotten an IHOP to go order, it's like going to a Tupperware party. <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely tip for that. Okay. But all right. Yeah, I'm not going so, to tip at a Pizza Hut or a McDonald's or right. Et cetera. So I go, like I would go if I pay, and I'm kind of like if I pay cash, and I get like a dollar or some change back, I'll put that in the tip jar. If I'm paying by card, I do not. And a lot of the places here in Jersey are still pulling. And this is another one that really will work my nerve. COVID's apparently made it okay for everyone to pay to finally start saying they're passing on that surcharge, yeah. from the 2.9% the surcharge if you pay by car. I've seen, I've seen signs that say, 
Uh, our processor has upped their fee, so your bill will be higher. You know, so. or Square increased their percentage, so uh, you know you're if you're paying by card, you will be paying more. My 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 problem with that one, right? So it, anyway, if I'm paying by card, I no tip. I'm sorry, I'm not doing a tip for coming in and picking up my order that I placed on the website, and I didn't even have to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm 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 here. <laughs> I'm, I'm tipping myself by not tipping you. If we're, we're getting businesses around here, and we may have, I may have talked about this on the show before. It's not just restaurants that are doing this now. There's a certain veterinarian that I'm aware of that is, char is putting a surcharge on vet bills if you are paying with a credit card. And he credit doesn't take card. checks. So you're either paying cash or credit card. And the thing is, credit card fees are the cost of doing business. Thank right? you. That is, it Thank is the you. cost of doing yeah. business and allowing that payment type in. If you don't want to accept that cost, then don't accept that payment type. There, nothing says you have to accept credit cards. All right? But you will work yourself out of being able to service a lot of people. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, there's a couple of bars around here that don't take credit cards. They don't take debit cards. They're cash only. They have an ATM in the bar, and yes. that charges you a fee every time you use it. That's how they make the money out of that. But then at least they don't piss you off with a service charge on your credit card. You know, because people understand, hey, if I go to an ATM that's not mine, I'm going to pay a service fee. You know, that they understand. They, they're used to that. It's typical, you know. Um, so I, the, those bars I kind of understand. But, you know, doing business has a cost. And guess what? The way you recoup that cost is by the price of your product or service. And you don't yeah. ostracize one form of payment over another. You should just set a damn price that takes care of that. And guess what? Yeah. If the person paid cash... You make a little bit more profit. Yeah, uh, minimum is fine. I'm okay with minimum. You want to tell me that you have to buy at least X amount of, of stuff to get, uh, or you have to get a surcharge? Yeah, cool. and there's, and, yeah, well, that's there's, fine. there's, there's gas stations here that'll say, listen, we have a, we have a ten dollar minimum if you're paying with a card, because otherwise it costs us more to do it. And I'm okay with that. I'm listen. I'm yep. okay with you setting some boundaries around using a card but what i'm not okay with is two different prices based upon how i'm paying that's like saying well we're going to give men one price and we're going to give women another price so it's, gas stations it's, in it's new jersey cashism. that's what it is gas stations that's what i'm going to call it cashism gas stations in jersey which are screwed up anyway since we can't pump our own gas but they have always had for or most places have a cash price and a credit price and yes, of course, the credit price is higher. Yeah, but they're upfront. There's no surcharge. There's no. You're yeah. very clear about yeah. it. These places, there's a 2.9 percent surcharge. That, so now I got to do freaking algebra to figure out exactly. <laughs> oh, and don't don't let me calculate that you put the surcharge on the tax, because then we're going to be fighting people. Because the tax. You don't tip on the tax either. Be clear no. about that. You don't tip on the tax. Uh, I, Cisco says, yeah. So some, Cisco said pretty much the same thing Colin says. You know, for curbside or takeout, we leave a tip because they still get our food ready. Not like a real tip, but a couple of bucks. Not at fast food, though. No. Yeah, because the whole idea behind because the fast food workers are not tipped employees. So if you go to McDonald's and the thing says, would you like to leave a tip? Hell no. No. I'm sorry. The whole thing behind tipping at a restaurant, especially a sit-down one, is because as long as you are at that table, you are stopping someone else from being at that table. So your tip should be pro proportional to how long you stayed at that table. Well, that's Think about an this, interesting Mike. take because, on that. Yeah. Because my I mean, wife, I, no, I understand your logic, yeah. but I don't think I've ever related that part to 
tipping. I've related that to being courteous and not yeah. sitting there forever. If people are waiting for tables, but not to the size of the tip. That because right, the idea of don't ask the for the idea check. The tip Once is, you ask for the check, then you should be yeah, you should yeah. be on your way out. Yeah, but the idea not, of the tip is not to say that you're using up a table. The idea of the tip is to say that, in some degree, the wait staff works for you. Well, and you're paying them. It to all depends because do my, stuff for you. Because my wife will say uh, that you know she tips bigger when she goes out when she when she used to go out with her her sister in law. Um, from her ex-husband when they went out to breakfast and they would catch up you know catch up with each other you know they might sit at a table for an hour and a half you know well in that time that waitress may have been able to cycle through two maybe even three tables worth of people okay so the tip that they leave needs to be big enough to make up for the tips she's not getting because that table is not cycling through well, yeah, I, if, I can see that. If, Place if visit. there's a wait. Like, if you're sitting there at the end of the night and there's no people waiting for tables. Right. And you're yeah. just there. All right? You're not taking money out of her pocket. If True. anything, you're putting a little bit more because maybe you will order another round of drinks. And, uh, yeah. Oh, we're sitting here. We're, just, we're having – it's a good topic of conversation. You know what? Let's get another round before we go. Okay. Or yeah. let's get dessert. Let's get a snack. Let, yeah, let's, let's get smashed something. and then drive home. Yeah, that's what we want to yeah. do. Here. But, but but for breakfast, you're sitting there, and she keeps bringing you coffee. You're not paying for all that coffee. True. No. Yeah. So, That's a good point. So so I like the idea of saying, well, if you're going to do that, then, yeah, you should go ahead and, you know, pay extra for all those extra free cups of coffee she brought. For he but, brought, to, you know, and to, call, to, to Shaggy's point earlier, I'm not – I don't like the term living wage. Because there are too many variables around that, all right? Yeah. If, if, wait, if wait staff weren't tipped employees, that they got minimum wage and you, as a result, or got paid like other workers, not tipped workers, so they're not making $2 an hour. Mm-hmm. If wait staff got paid hourly wage, then tipping would not be needed. Waiters would – wait staff would be paid more. Yeah. And people would want to be waiters because waiters get paid more. Now, do, will you still get tips? Probably because the mindset doesn't change overnight. People will still give tips for excellent service. Maybe on parties of six or more, there is a 10% surcharge because it's more of a pain in the ass, something to that effect. Yeah. You know, a lot of restaurants around here, eight or more, they automatically – this pisses me off no end. They automatically put in 20%. Oh, here are some restaurants, it's 30. Okay. No. Yeah. No. It should be That's 15. ridiculous here. I'm okay with a larger party getting the tip automatically put in, but have that spelled out clear and what the percentage is because 20%, 20% and your service is terrible, well, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you're going to if you're going to mandate a tip on a large party, you better make sure you put good waitresses on that party. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And you better make sure you put enough cooks in the kitchen to make sure food comes out when it's supposed to. You know, I understand. Oh, there's the national labor shortage. Blah, blah, blah. But I'm sorry. Either have your place open or don't. If you don't have enough people to staff it, close the damn doors. All right. That's just the way that it is. Well, restaurants around here will close off sections. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So in reality, they're only seating a quarter of their capacity, but that's because that's all the staff they have. Yeah. But there are other restaurants where there's still lines out the door. I don't understand this one for the life of me. The chain restaurants have lines out the door. The, the hometown mom-and-pop type restaurants that have much better food, even though it may be a little pricier, but you get in your portion, no lines out the door. Yeah. I don't understand why people are waiting in line at Texas Roadhouse when there's a comparable family-owned steakhouse right down the road. Have you had their butter biscuits? Uh, maybe, maybe they're running a sodium deficiency. I mean, perhaps. 
me, do you not or love MSG? Do the, does the family owned business have peanuts that I can eat and throw on the ground? Because that um, is our a bonus. Texas Roadhouse doesn't do peanuts anymore. Well, they are a bunch of pansies. I actually, we were just there last night, and now that you mention it, there were no peanuts on the damn table. <laughs> Where boycott, would the boycott, boycott, Bud Light and Texas Roadhouse? I'm telling you right now, we're boycotting them. Fat, I'm a message for the to same people reason. I was with. Be like, hey. But you know, you know what I miss from you know childhood is we didn't just have restaurants that had peanuts. There are restaurants that you, you just took all the peanut shells and threw them on the ground. The floor of the restaurant was just carpeted with peanut shells. That was and Texas was Roadhouse when they first opened. Yeah, but you can't do that anymore. There's a big sign on the door: "Peanut Dust." In the warning, peanut dust. Yeah. Well, listen, Texas Roadhouse needs to start handing out those patches that supposedly cure the peanut allergies. Yeah. Which, ironically, is probably just a uh, Band-Aid with some peanut butter in it. As of 2016, they had been sued at least three times for their peanuts. I stopped going there just because I got tired of how salty their food is. Uh, and that's most that's most places anymore. I hate to say it. They put they put salt in they they over season their food to make up for the reduced quantity yeah. that you're getting. Yeah, um, when my teeth start squeaking, I just yeah, no. All right, so Mama Blair worked in – Kenna worked in a bakery. That changed my mind on tipping. Their tips were divided among all workers, bakers, servers, cooks, etc. They really counted on those tips, even though they were paid well enough. It was a real motivation to do a great job, and they were local. Well, so a couple of things. Like when I put money in a tip jar at a place, I don't know if tips are being split or not, even at – restaurants i don't know if the tip i give the waitress has to be split amongst bartenders and yeah. bus staff so well let's see here i mean let's... i get it I'm, I'm not discounting the personal experience here but there there those are variables you got exposed to because of an inside connection it's not something that you can easily figure out when you go to a place and yeah factor that in when you're tipping so mike i have a list here of 10 forgotten restaurants in New Jersey. What is it with you and lists? Okay, what is this? To make me feel old? Go ahead. Well, Go I'm, ahead. Just, I'm just curious how many of these you know. Go ahead, and then we'll uh, I, I don't know I'll, how I'll close see if to, I can... to Tom's River you are. Well, let's give, it a, let's give it a try. Old Time Tavern in Tom's River. Don't know it. Intersection of R Route 9 and 37 in the I Old I know Dover Route Mall. 9. That's Okay. And then there was the Dover Diner. Heard of it. Winkleman's Restaurant in Lakewood. Heard of it. Circus Drive-In in Wall. Heard, again, heard of it. Steak and Ale. I loved Steak and Ale. <laughs> Not enough. They went bankrupt. Uh, yes. The Sizzler, which even we know what the Sizzler is. Sizzler I mean, was That wasn't awesome. a local restaurant. Like, <laughs> Everyone knows Sizzler, yes. I was going to say, now, now you're getting into more chains here's, that... Here's, here's another one that, oh, it definitely was a New Jersey thing. Fuddruckers. I mean, come on. It, everybody knows what Fuddruckers was. Fuddruckers was... It was, was, was oh, and here's another one. New hard. Jersey exclusive. Howard Johnson's... Ice cream cocktail. Howard Howard Johnson's, basically. Yeah, okay. nobody's ever heard of that. Oh, another one. Denny's. Oh. Denny's is still around. <laughs> nope. Evidently, Denny's is all gone. No, there were Denny's said, all over the damn place. It says there were there are ten of the twenty four hour oh, there are ten of the twenty four hour restaurants left in New Jersey, mostly in the yeah. southwest part of the state. There's there. Do you remember a couple years back you stayed in 
There's none uh, left hotel. in Monmouth. So there, there's one right in East Brunswick on uh, yeah by by where you guys stayed. Yeah. Uh, Chevy's. Chevy's. Yes, I know it. Yeah. So yeah, those are the those are the forgotten restaurants unique to New Jersey. <laughs> With like I'm six disappointed. Chains. So they, they mentioned like steak and ale, okay, and, and some of these other national chains. I'm disappointed that they didn't mention um, Ponderosa. Yeah. Um, Beefsteak Charlie's. No, I don't know that. Did one. you have? No. You don't have Beefsteak Charlie's. Beefsteak Charlie's used to have a commercial. It was very similar to Ponderosa, where the guy came came on. He had the handlebar mustache and the checkerboard apron, and he's like, "Come on down to our our buffet." Where all the beer, wine, and sangria you can drink. Because <laughs> that was included with your buffet. Wow. Now, that I wasn't was nice. old enough to drink, yeah. but I knew that was a good deal because I could get my damn grandparents, my alcoholic grandfather, to pay for dinner that way. Uh, well, we used to have a local called uh, uh, Mavericks where Shaggy yeah, and I Mavericks. spent many an hour. There used to be a place that felt that that really fueled my love for hot dogs. It was actually called Amazing Hot Dog, where they would take quarter pound caseless franks, wrap them in bacon, and deep fry them. That's how they were cooked. I don't need to go any further with that story. If no. you're if you're not thinking that this is possibly the greatest idea ever, then we we should probably just move on. Yeah, we will. You know, actually, let's, let's talk I, about it. So, what is the weirdest um, idea for a restaurant you have locally? The weirdest idea for a restaurant. Well, okay, so it's not really weird, but it it. So we have some Korean barbecue around here, and to me, oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of funny because it's right. So it, it's kind of funny, like you're paying all this money to cook your own food, which I never quite understood, but okay. We have a steak um, place like that. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm getting, getting it's I'm getting awful damn tired place. of all these fusion places around us. All right. There are something like Asian fusion. Okay. So you have some like Hawaiian Chinese mixed dish. Okay. Kind of. Okay. But, there are some things that shouldn't be fused, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> so uh, the one Shaggy was just referring to, we, we have a steakhouse that has big um, charcoal fires. You know, this big, this big pit of charcoal on it. And you can pay for them to cook your steak, or you can just cook your own steak yourself. And it's... I mean, it's you like, buy the steak from them, and then you put it on the big grill. And it's a highfalutin place. It's not like a, like anything. I mean, it like rich people go there. It's ridiculous. I went there, and I think I ordered a drink, and it was twelve bucks. You mean an alcoholic drink? Yeah, but it wasn't okay. anything fancy. It was like a rum and coke, and I mean that that doesn't sound like a lot for some areas. I know that. That would probably be like an easy twenty dollar drink elsewhere, but around here, that's like a six dollar drink. So it was double the price of what it should have been. Yeah, we used to have a we used to have a a uh, uh, well. Where was that the buffet place that we used to go to? Old Country Buffet is that what we used to go to, Colin? Back when um, we, were, we went here a we couple were, times. Yeah, you're right. When we were super fat. Uh, <laughs> well, Old Country Buffet was like a national I don't know chain, there was, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> so, so, back. There then, was one down by us, too. There was Old Country Buffet and there was Hometown Buffet. And I, I always wondered, are they are the they same? Related? Are they different? What are they? Yeah. And then we also used to have a, a place. Um, it was originally called Shakey's Buffet. And then they closed out. But the same the guy who owned it started Diamond's Buffet. Uh, you know, I used to go there all the time when I was when I was a kid. And yeah, that was that was a great place, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that guy was. seriously is the greatest runner of a buffet. Yeah, you know, person who runs a buffet, he was he he, he was amazing. Yeah, but uh, evidently not at like running a business, just running a buffet. He could keep food on that buffet all day long. 
I don't think yeah. I think that was part of the problem, is it was fully stocked all the time. Uh, so, but yeah. All uh, right. I, th- I think they shut down just because he got too old. Ah, uh, could be. I don't know. So, Mike, was what's what's Heritage House? Oh, Heritage House. That was another buffet. Boy, we were good at buff- buffets in this town. If oh, we want the if, greatest buffet. That, it was all. It had it had lettering along the top of the of the uh, building that just said Smorgasbord. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was where but there there's this other place where instead of you going around the buffet, you stood in place and the buffet turned. So, yeah, Heritage House is where my grandparents used to take me after baseball games, because <laughs> so, they had a huge like dessert buffet. Ah, oh, it was awesome. Yeah, no wonder I'm still fat. Uh, <laughs> now we just have a uh, uh, golden corral. Yeah, well, COVID killed buffets. That's yeah. I my wife says she'll never go back to a buffet again. You know? Oh, I absolutely will. I I I long for the day that I can go go back to the iron skillet breakfast buffet at the truck stop. Oh, see, golden corral used to have all you could eat prime rib. Something about prime rib from Golden Corral, being that I am a beef snob. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was good. It was good. It was good. You know. All right. Uh, now let's. Uh, we got our reviews to get to here in a second, but uh, let's talk uh, Al Pacino first, because uh, old old boy. Oh God, we got to talk about. Who was the other? Who who's the other one? De Niro, and Pacino. What is it with these eighty-year-old bastards having kids? Well, didn't didn't uh, 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 the boss just have another baby too? I don't know. I all right, so Al Pacino went ahead. He got his what? He got his girlfriend pregnant. But here's the here's the baller thing about it. He wanted a DNA test because he was like, there's no way that I can have gotten you pregnant. He didn't even believe it. So he wasn't even trying. Meanwhile, De Niro was trying. And my comment, how old is De Niro? De Niro's what, 78? Or is he older than? Uh, I don't know. Robert De Niro. He's 79. All right? So my comment to that was, like, all the women I know were commenting in, like, oh, God, oh, 79, having a kid, that's disgusting. I'm like, what? You mean women don't fantasize about 79-year-old balls? What? (laughs) But great pubes don't turn them on? Uh, And then here comes... And then here comes. Uh, so, Billy Joel had a daughter. Here comes at Pacino. Six, Billy Joel had a daughter at sixty-five. Simon Cowell, fifty-three. Hugh Grant, fifty-two. Elton John, sixty-six. Mick Jagger, fifty-six. Kelsey Grammer, fifty-eight. Michael Douglas, fifty-eight. And let's see here. Jeff Goldblum had a baby at 65. John Stamos had one at 54. Uh, George Clooney had one at 56. Mm, uh, Steve Martin was 67 when he had a kid. Uh, um, Alec Baldwin is 60. Uh, yep, Michael Douglas. Um, yep. Uh, at, th- at this point, at 80 years old, and in that range, if you're having a kid, you are not going to be a father to that kid. You're going to be hiring somebody to be a father. I mean, yeah. 
Uh, Mick Jagger had a kid, kid as recently as 2016. Uh, Nick Cannon had okay. a kid yesterday. Oh, look, Nick Cannon just had a kid. Yeah. She did? Hmm? Nick Cannon. I think Nick Cannon has a new kid every two minutes. Oh, Nick so. Cannon. Oh my God! Okay, I thought you said McKenna. I was like, "What?" <laughs> no, 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 no. Nick not... Cannon, not McKenna. No. Nick Cannon, not McKenna. Nick Cannon. Okay. Now, and McKenna didn't have a kid with Nick Cannon, or that would have been big news. That would be news to her. That would have been news to a lot of people. <laughs> I would like to make it perfectly clear to our listening audience that that was Shaggy that said that, not Mike the Ape Man. I said she didn't. I said she didn't. I, I did not even imply. <laughs> I want to make it very clear. I am hated enough. I am not going to go down that road, <laughs> damn it. Uh, that's all right. There is a 76% chance. 76.4 to be exact percent chance that if your last name maiden or otherwise is blair you are not a fan of mike the eight man that's a fact okay that is a fact uh, and i i do not want that number to go any higher so i am being very very clear about that Y'all going to get me canceled. <laughs> what, what movies did we do again? Because it's been so damn long. I had to I, I open know. up the sheet and remind myself that, oh, yeah, that's right. It was Child Children's Week for the movies. Yes. Yes, it was. Wait, why do we keep theming these weeks? <laughs> it's hilarious. I don't, I don't know. And I don't, even remember, I don't remember what the movies were either. <laughs> uh... So we had... Metal Lords. Oh, okay. Yep. Which was a teen version of Spinal Tap. Yep. I guess. And Night Books, which was like Mortimer S. Marker meets Nickelodeon. I don't know. Goosebumps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right, Colin, you want to go first? Do you remember enough? Sure, to go first? Start with. Uh, whichever one you want. Well, I'll just do night books since I can get that in here. So, okay, go ahead. Night books is a horror movie for kids. So, if you have kids who like horror stuff. This is a movie for them. It's a about a kid who is writing horror stories and is um, doesn't really have very many friends because he's the weird kid in the class. And basically, he gets abducted by the witch from Hansel and Gretel, and he has to write stories to keep for reasons that aren't really explained until much later. It's like the whole thing of why was he trying, he, he, was, he was trying to get rid of his books and that's like goes on way too long to say why he wanted to get rid of his books, which this came down to the one friend he thought he had now thinks he's weird too. And the, the most stereotypical kids thing, uh, plot of all time, he had a birthday party and nobody came which came up recently in Peppermint. So another theme we have going on. Anyway, it, 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 it's a horror movie. It was uh, produced actually by um, a horror uh, royalty, um, which I just forgot his name. Um, it's not Tim Burton. It's, Wes Craven? Um, no. It's, um, here we go, producers... Sam Raimi, you know, Evil Dead guy. Um, 
it is a, it's a perfectly pleasant horror movie that is okay for kids. And, um, you know, kid actually managed to make friends. But I, I, I will say there was a very nasty scene with an invisible cat that I don't, it did not feel quite as age appropriate as the rest of the movie was. That was a little, I think that was a little too far. Um, just, I'll, just, I'll just leave it at that. Um, and, um, but you know, overall, it was fine. And um, we'll go, I'll give it a smile, I guess. All right. Good deal. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Um, so, uh, night books blends elements of fantasy, horror, and adventure. Uh, kind of together. Uh, it it kind of takes you into this scenario where storytelling kind of becomes a, a life or death issue, uh, like Colin kind of said. Uh, revolves around Alex, a young boy with a passion for writing scary stories, who finds himself trapped in a mysterious apartment by a witch named uh, Natatacha, whatever, I don't remember. Um, in order to survive, Alex must entertain her every night by telling her a new and captivating story. With the help of his fellow captive, Yasmin, uh, they embark on a series of imaginative adventures weaving together tales that keep uh, the witch's hunger for stories at bay. All right. A pretty, you know, standard. Exactly what Colin kind of said. Um, the performances are pretty good, um, particularly for the young actors. I don't believe they're of any note from previous things that I've seen. Um Visually, the movie's, pr again, on par, um, you know, so really, n not to, you know, go too much further other than what Colin said, it's it's an interesting premise, it, it kind of takes a, a new stab at, at some old tropes, um, it, I think it would resonate okay with children or adults, um, you know, it's pretty good at world building, and um, you know, it's it's a good little storytelling type of movie. So, you know, I would say go ahead, uh, watch it. But yeah, um, age appropriateness. You're probably looking at 12 plus. I would say for this movie, it's it's not for the super young, um, but you know, I think 12 plus would be able to handle it without too many problems. And um, you know, I. It wasn't necessarily for me, uh, but I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a smile along with Colin, just for lack of anything better. All right, Mike. All right, so this was I watched this one second, so it was round two of the Kitty double feature. At least this one was a Netflix presentation, so maybe it'll be a little better quality. Spoiler alert than that other Dookie Fest that we had to watch. <laughs> Let me just say something. If I was in an elevator and it bumped violently before stopping at the wrong floor, I'm getting out. I'm getting out, and I'm taking the stairs. I'm not pushing other buttons. I'm getting the hell off that elevator. Now, the hairless cat. Never trust hairless cats. Okay, they're not cats. Period. Full stop. It's not a cat. What the hell is the demon spider thing? The, the creepy crawly. That's actually the best part of the movie so far. I was very nifty little nod to the Lost Boys with the remake of Cry Little Sister during the potion scene. Um, I still have to go and try and find that version now because that, that'll make a great under-the-covers version, although I have a new trivia category that I didn't, I didn't talk about, Movie Madness, where I play a song like Cry Little Sister from a movie, and you got to tell me what movie it's from. Uh, the, I think this may be the scene that Colin's referring to, but there was a scene where the invisible cat hairless not a cat almost died um and i was even like okay this cannot happen um but it doesn't so it's all good um 
evil unicorn. But I wonder if that's the unicorn that I envisioned Obama and Neil Patrick Harris riding while waiting for the mothership to take them home with Tom Cruise uh, while Helen Keller surfed the web at turbo speed. Really throwing it back now, people. Uh, look, if you've got kids, go ahead and watch this movie with them. It might be a little scary, but it's doable. Like Shaggy said, I'd say maybe 12 and up, uh, depending on how mature your children are. Uh, if you don't have kids, get the, don't watch this movie. Just don't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm giving this a meh only because I have no idea how else to rank this. I, I, I don't. I felt I kept feeling like the main the kid that was doing the writing. I kept feeling like he was a dollar store version of the kid from Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Is he somehow related to that kid? Is he that kid's kid? It's Inception. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, that was not the scene I was referring to. Okay. I, I was referring to the pooping scene. I probably blanked that scene out, but okay. All right. Colin, Metal Lords. Yep. <laughs> the cinematic metal Lord. adventure that is Metal Lords. Yay, Metal Lords. Okay. Let me just say first off, everything in this movie that is music was enjoyable. And in fact, I need to find a actual metal band that has somebody playing the cello like that because um, I, I need to have a playlist of just that. Uh, that is that is that is, is up my alley. But otherwise, uh, the main character is Kevin. Um, but his best friend is Hunter. Hunter is that stereotypical character. So you get a lot of these in these movies. Um, you know, mother abandoned him and his father. His father is a plastic surgeon and, of course, is dating all of his uh, uh, patients and uh, basically is kind of ignored his son who has stolen the American Express and gone crazy with it. So, you know, that character, those characters you've seen in lots of movies. The, the difference here is that this kid has decided to go full metal. And in some scenes, full misogynist. And this movie would have been better if they'd actually finished off something in that character, some kind of catharsis, some kind of... Um, you know, I, I don't need the character to be fixed. I don't need him to be mentally okay. But the movie just kind of shrugs and goes, oh, no, he's fine. It's just metal. And I'm just looking at that going, no. No, you can't just explain it away and say, you know, Bill Cosby was fine with what he did. It was just metal. That that, that It doesn't work. You, you, you can't just say it's metal, Okay. But, to go back to the beginning, so, best friend of this screwed up metal kid is pulled into the band to play drums. He doesn't play drums, he plays a drum in a marching band, which he's in to get out of PE. Um, yeah, I, that I can understand. I, I did, you know, I, I was in a class in high school that uh, allowed me to not to be in PE for a year that was good um but the guy goes full on with the drums and learns how to play the drums really well that, that, you know, that those that part of the movie great um and then the kid um he meets this uh girl who herself has mental issues uh, she's on medication but she plays the cello she also doesn't play the clarinet um and the two of them start playing heavy metal music together, but they can't get in the other guy with the guitar because he's being uh, crazy because, you know, his wife, his mother left him, so he has trouble um, with women in general. Again, I think that should have been solved better than it was, which it wasn't. 
Um, anyway, there's Battle of the Bands. It's, it's basically a bad, more adult version of School of Rock. That's that's really what this is. This is a School of Rock uh, without um, Jack Black in it. And uh, the age range moved up to the other end of teenagers. So, um, yeah, it's, it's without going too much into the plot, what there is of it, that's uh, this movie. If you want to uh, watch teenagers playing heavy metal music and um, uh, getting mad at each other and then getting back together at the end and... Again, like School of Rock not really winning in the end. There you go. This is your movie. Uh, just because I actually did enjoy music, I, I'm, I'm going to give this on a smile. Um, I, I think this movie could have been better. All right. So uh, the first about 45 minutes of this movie are extremely long, boring, and drawn out just know that they establish some backstory but they are very tedious to make it through all right um you know they 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 do okay at setting up the characters but they do nothing to really move the story along very well um and then you're left the rest of the movie to basically do the movie part um does it do a great job of the movie part no um, like Colin said, predictable plot, predictable progression, predictable storyline, predictable this, that, and the other. Um, you know, uh, soundtrack, eh, okay. Um, you know, uh, but visually, the film doesn't do a whole lot to impress. The performances are not terribly great. The, um, you know, it, it's kind of a lackluster and forgettable film. Uh, we've seen other coming of age films that do a whole lot better. Um, you know, it just it doesn't ignite any excitement or relatability to the characters, really. Um, you know, and it's just uh, it's 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 not nearly as interesting. I'd I'd rather watch the Nickelodeon you know uh, tomb show uh, than this thing again, because even though putting the monkey puzzle back together was extremely boring, it at least had a couple of chuckles every now and then. Uh, so, you know, yeah, this wasn't a great film. It just, for me, it wasn't. So I'm going to go ahead and I, I'll give it a meh because it probably appeals to somebody out there, but it don't deserve no better than that. All right. My? Uh, for Mike, to talk, I, I, I made a mistake. It's smirk, not smile. Okay. For, okay. All right. All right. So this drummer kid, I'm pretty sure he's the bastard love child of young Leonard from Big Bang and Harry Potter. Um, the way this movie is getting so cliche, I am surprised that the kid didn't throw up on the girl at the party. And as Shaggy said, for like the for the first forty five minutes, I'm just like, <laughs> um, small town like that that they live in. I am pretty sure doing 120 miles an hour in a Dodge Challenger down Main Street means everyone knows it's you doing that. <laughs> so, <laughs> cringe warning. When the Scottish chick says to, is talking to the, to, 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 to Leonard Potter and says make sure you bring thingies for your thingy what no so now the main character hunter has his half shaven head and you know what maybe i do need glasses for when i'm on a computer because i keep looking at him and i'm seeing i'm seeing leah thomas the the the, the swimmer 
Now, I want to know where they got these metal legends from Anthrax and Metallica and, and, and such. Where did they get, how did they get these guys to show up in this freaking movie? I, I need to know this. Um, and, of course, Joe Manganiello. <laughs> this freaking guy is everywhere. He is the famous Troy Nix that they talk about in this entire movie. And he's bald in this movie. Shaven head. How is it possible that Joe Manganiello is still so freaking good looking with a bald head. <laughs> this was Netflix trying to do an after school special. That's exactly what it was. And yes, I did enjoy most of the music. I enjoyed the covers that they did. The original song they did at Battle of the Bands, I was like, eh. Should have stuck with War Pigs. Yeah. Uh, what I want to know is, and I'm looking at you, Shag. I want to know what the hell you were even watching that this came up as a recommendation. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. That's what I want to know. That is the big mystery in all of this. I'm giving it a mess. <laughs> all right. time to pick for the next show we have got 28 on here only 28 movies wow i am going to guess without looking at the movie list of the theme this time will be dogs 10 I, i'm gonna bet the the theme is gonna be movies that aren't available <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna fight you in a second <laughs> You're right. Number 10 is not available. Thank God, because the description is Hallmarkish movie. <laughs> All right. 28. Oh, boy. I, okay, this is on Amazon. Green Ghost and the Masters of the Stone. Let's just stop for a second. I'm going to read the description, and then we'll take... A group of Mexican superheroes are forced to team up with a gringo to save humanity. <laughs> oh, we haven't had one of those in a while. <laughs> The only reason it's I'm in, even I'm not even trying to ve is veto this is because Danny Trejo's in it. Oh God, yes. I tell you right now, we might as well watch. <laughs> oh, I love it! I love it. I Trump and the, the Illuminati if, at this point. Oh. All right, go ahead. Twelve. Um, hold on. Let me see if it's hiding somewhere and the link was bad. Okay. So the link was bad. Um, okay. I will replace the link. It is on Amazon. It, it, this may actually be a good one. It's a Liam Neeson movie called Blacklight. Two words or one word? Uh, one word. Okay. A troubled off-the-books fixer for the FBI finds himself in the middle of a deadly government conspiracy. Ooh. Is his daughter taken during it? <laughs> no, he does, does not need that special set of skills. Well, it sounds like he does movie. need that special set of skills. <laughs> All right. So Green Ghost and the Masters of the Stone and Blacklight. That sounds, sounds like a wonderful combination. What a double yeah. feature. All right. I don't know. We may be breaking a streak of having um, a theme going with this. We'll see. <laughs> All right. And the next question then is our next show going to be on the 12th? Is that when we're going to do it? I think that sounds reasonable. I'm okay with that date. Okay. So then we will plan. What? Yes, Colin. 
12? It's you guys, yep. so. All right. Okay. So we'll plan on it being a 12th. Um, and, uh, you know, at that point, everybody can, can tune in to us then. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in and uh, listening to the show. Uh, don't forget to check out the podcast. Uh, you can check out the link for that at ptrradio.com. It's also got information for all the hosts as well as information about the show in general. Don't forget, you can also check us out on our social medias. That's PTR Radio on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all the fun stuff uh, where you can keep in touch with the show and let us know how you're doing. If there's a topic you want us to cover, more than willing to take a look at it and give you our two cents. Uh, I don't have anything coming up. You just had some stuff, but Mike, anything coming uh, down the line? I may have some stories, but nothing that I can firmly commit to at this time. All right. Colin, anything for you? You got another trip to Disney plan that we don't know about, maybe? No, no I have no out of, out of, nothing out of, uh, yeah, nothing for many, many months. Oh, by the way, next show, remember to show us everything that you throw shade on your cruise. We're really looking forward to that. Uh, and maybe you can get some of your new friends on the phone. If they got some, uh, you know, knitting news that they want to relay to us, we'd appreciate that too. So, uh, you know, we're glad to have everybody back uh, and looking forward to getting back into a regular swing of uh, show every two weeks. So, thanks everybody for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And uh, we will get back to a regular schedule of shows. Uh, we'll just keep everybody happy, healthy, and on the air. So, with that said, folks, I'm Shaggy. I'm Colin. I'm Mike the Ape Man. Sick of forking us, folks. We are done. Later. Can't even help yourself with the revenge of the monkey grinder.